Welcome to the presentation on Incident FireNet Setup. We're going to review the website today and the actual page where all this information is. So there's not an actual presentation that we're going to follow. The goal is that you can find this information on your own. You can just use your phone, you can use your computer, and you can come to our website to find the incident FireNet setup information or the link to request an account or the FireNet tracking incident roster template. So just to show you how you get here so you know, and again, this is Tara Taylor Hartman with the FireNet project team. You start by going to firenet.gov. The first time you go there, sometimes you have to put in www.firenet.gov, but then it figures out where you're going after that. So we just come all the way over on the right, where the, there's the FireNet portal. And once you're in here, this is where all your information is, FireNet, webinar information. Under information up here in the navigation, or you could go to the information option, you're going to see incident FireNet setup information, and that's the page that we're going to go through today. I am going to run this a little bit differently than I did on Tuesday's call. I'm going to run through the process and I'm going to answer questions at the end. Uh, if you have to leave and you have to shoot me an email, you could do that. But um, we, I answered questions during the presentation last time and it, I think it broke it up a little bit. And what I really want you to see is the, the high level process of how an incident request comes in and what happens. So some of the details, um, if you've got specific questions for your team or anything like that, um, I can answer those. Um, but we just want to, I just want to make sure in the sake of your time that we get a pretty basic overview. We're going to go through everything and then I'm going to go back and answer questions. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try that path today. All right, so to start, we made it to the incident fire net setup page. Um, to start, the, we've been getting some feedback from different GACs and um, dispatch centers. And as a team, we decided we're gonna, this is the standard that we're following for this season. Um, and that's based on feedback from last season and the time uh, we have getting ramped up and the involvement that we have at this point. So the incident account request, comes from the IMT at this point. That's the standard that we're teaching. Um, we don't have all dispatch centers or GACs necessarily uh, set up and on board. So as far as reaching out to teach them this process, uh, we decided we're gonna stick with for this season that it's the incident management team, somebody on the IMT that's putting in the request. In the past, it's usually the ITSS, the plan section chief, or the PIO that starts this process. This can be started from anywhere. So people who did it last year, you could do it on your phone. So you're at the airport waiting to fly somewhere. <clears throat> Excuse me. You could go ahead and jump on FireNet on your phone, click the incident account request form, and you could put in the information there. Um, so a lot of times if, if you're organized, um, it can be done on your way somewhere before you're even there. So that that FireNet account um, firenet.gov account is created. The, the highest level goal is that Gmail accounts aren't used. So some things that we'll talk about today are a little more um, increased involvement or inc increased collaboration features or different, different ways that you can use the system. But we want just kind of high level, don't get overwhelmed. Um, the goal is to put in a request, you say who you are, and answer some questions, and I'll show you that form, and then a firenet.gov account is created. Firenet is in Google, so it's gonna look like a Gmail account that you would normally create. Uh, so it's not a different, it's not anything new. Um, so please don't get overwhelmed with some of the information from a high level. We want that account to be Firenet instead of Gmail. So with the commercial free Gmail accounts, uh, the data isn't backed up anywhere, uh, the servers are overseas, there's no tracking there. Whereas in FireNet, we have Google Vault, so all the data is um, saved, which is one of the legal requirements. And uh, we, we know we could track the information, I'll talk about the naming. 
and we know that where that information is stored. So that's a little bit of the background on um, why we're recommending the use of FireNet. Um, you can find the NMAC memo on the website. And so if you want to learn more about that uh, recommendation, you can visit that memo. So I will start with the incident account request form, and I'm going to click on it here. So the person that you decide is going to complete this for your team will just go ahead and click on that link. And they're going to complete this information. So the incident order number, we use that when we create the name of the account and the team drive, name of the incident, the team dispatched. A new one that we have this year is name of the local dispatch center where the incident is being dispatched out of. So our goal is to add the dispatch, local dispatch center to the team drive at the point of creation. So then they will, in the end, be the only one basically that has access. So the team drive would end up back at that local unit. And then we have information for the PIO, plan section chief, and ITSS. So what this does is I'm going to walk you through the process of how things are created. This lets us know who we're adding and who's being sent things. And then they can kind of take, take things over from there. Another new question that we've added this year is who would you like the main account login credentials to be sent to? So this, the, very, the, the first account that's created is the main account, and that's to communicate with the public, which is the G, one of the main Gmail accounts that's usually created in the community. And that is usually used by the PIO. Uh, so 90% of the time, this will probably be sent to the PIO. And you would just choose the drop down, and you would say PIO. Sometimes if there's a PIO that doesn't want to log in and get that set up, um, maybe there's a plan section chief that has things organized, then they get things started. So if you decide it's somebody different, then you would just check that option, and then we'll send the login credentials to that person. And then you just go ahead and click Submit. So that gets the ball rolling. If I've got some feedback that, you know, somebody, maybe they didn't have FireNet on an, on an incident. Um, well, that's because uh, this process didn't start. So this process can start any time. If you show up at an incident, they're using Gmail, you're like, hey, I think we should use FireNet, go ahead, trigger the process. We can start you anywhere, um, anywhere, anywhere in the, within the fire. You could technically start the process to get your team um, onboarded in FireNet. So what's going to be created at that point is an account, and I'm going to show you what the naming is going to look like. So you'll see here it's got we've got the calendar year, the unit identifier, and this helps us in records management, and then the incident name at firenet.gov. Here's some examples. And we do understand it's a, it's a long name, so we've listened to our, the feedback and we've created an alias. So to tell you how an alias works, so for example, say this account right here, the 2017 UTSWS um, is sent, the, the login credentials are sent to the PIO. Then, an alias is also created. The PIO is still going to log in with this main email address, but people we can we can shorten it so it's just the year and the name of the fire, and it's a dot instead of an underscore. So if you're sharing that publicly, it's easier if it type, gets hyperlinked. The dot will pick up better. So you don't log in with this, but people can email it. So all of our accounts that we generate with that longer name, which helps with uh, data, data records management, um, all of that information um, will stay, it stays within the account, but the alias is just for users to make it a little easier. When somebody gets an email, they're not gonna see that big long name, 
when an account is created, it gets a name based on, it gets a first and a last name, and that's the email that somebody will see when they get an email. I'm going to go back to information. So that's just a little background on the naming. And you can learn about that by following that link if you have any questions. All right, now the process starts. So I mentioned that the account is created. So two things happen. And I want to make, this is one point that um, I want to make clear because there can be some confusion around it. The account is created. So this named account that we talked about is created. At the same time, a team drive is created. They're created separately. So a lot of people assume that a team drive is falls like under a, a, the incident account, it does not. So they're completely separate. So when you add people to, if you delegate an inbox, for example, you also have to add people to the team drive. But in the end, that team drive goes back to the dispatch center. So they are separate. So if I give permissions to somebody in a dispatch center or a PIO, and say I've created a support person, I've created the team drive. If I give you the highest level of permissions, we're now equal. Everything in team drive is owned by FireNet. It does not fall under any account. So those two things are created. My, we'll use our PIO in this example just to go with our most common use case. So in my PIO just got an email that an account for yyy underscore whatever whatever underscore whatever at firenet.gov has been created here's your login information so they go ahead and log into that account they can if it's the, usually the pio they may choose to delegate the inbox out to all their other pios and then they're going to go on and do business with that inbox separately the team drive is created and I'm going to show you what's in that team drive. An email is going to go out to the PIO, the plan section chief, and the ITSS to let them know that the main account's been created and the team drive has been created. So they'll be able to find that information. So an email goes out to let them know that that's been done, and that's why we need um, that information in your the initial form that you complete. So now let's jump in. So just kind of moving through the process, we pretend our PIO got their login credentials. They now share 2017.brianhead at firenet.gov with the public, and they can go on and do business with that. So we're now going to look at the team drive. I have a sample one. <clears throat> so this is a sample team drive here. It has a file for contributor account. So if you have anybody with a, a NPS, BLM, Forest Service, BIA, a, basically these are Bison Connect accounts, which is the DOI's email system. They can collaborate with us in FireNet without needing an account. The only thing that they, they can't bring in documents, but they can just come in here and you'll see there's a bunch of blank documents and blank sheets. So that's the way that you can do uh, business as a contributor. So we always just make sure we have that, that folder in there. There's a welcome email with some information uh, the, similar to the welcome email that goes to the plan section chief, commonly asked questions, uh, information on transferring accounts. So there's a bunch of information in this welcome email. And then there's the roster. So we are gonna go in and visit the roster. I, I actually, I, I, from the feedback on my last call, it's confusing to call it a roster. I did name it something else. I just have to update it in here. Let's go to the website and I'm going to click on this. So I would actually like, if, if you all are following along and you're in front of a computer, you can actually go ahead and jump into this, what I'm calling the FireNet Account Incident Tracker Template. 
So this is basically for you to track FireNet accounts on your incident. So it's not like your ROS, like your normal roster that you're used to. So this is separate. So you can click on that. And then I can wait and see who clicks on it. Because y'all will show up in this upper right hand corner. Oh, we got a lot of people that aren't logged into FireNet. So if you're not logged into FireNet, you can see that people are um, anonymous, bingo, and anonymous squirrel. That's one of my favorite features in FireNet, the random animals. So we've, we've talked about that one person triggering on the IMT, triggering the, the process for the account to be created. When that happens, I now know your PIO information, your ITSS, and your plan section sheet. So if we need anything, we now have some points of contact to assist. But one of those folks, um, it would be good in advance to update this spreadsheet. So you can make a copy of this and update your team's information. Then when you're on an incident, so if I've got this completely updated, right? I'm gonna copy here. I'm gonna copy it. And then I'm on an incident, my team drive's created. I'm just gonna jump into the, the tracker on, in my team drive on that incident, and I'm gonna paste my information right in. So they'll match, so the template roster, that the other one's been updated, they'll match. So you can just copy and paste your information right in. If somebody's not there, you don't have to paste that. Um, you can update that information. So the goal is for this information to be updated in advance. So if it's updated in advance, that means if John Doe, your demo guy, is an AD, you've already, he's already applied for an account, he's been approved, and now we can give him the role-based account. To start at the top of this sheet, um, step one, usually it's the plan section sheet for the ITSS that's going to update this roster. So designate who that person is on your team. It's probably going to be the same person that puts in the initial request. Once this is updated, we talked about cutting and pasting your information to the one that's in the incident team drive. Once that's done, email FireNet underscore support at firenet.gov and say, hey, here's a link to my roster. I'm on the blank incident. Can you please generate my role-based account? Lastly, we'll talk about updating the demobing status for the account. So what we have here, the first ones, you're just noting your PIO, Plan Section Chief, ITSS, and GISS again. These folks are operating with their named account. So we don't have to do anything um, with, nothing's being created for them necessarily, but we wanna know their information so that we, um, in case we need to reach out. The most important line is line 12 here is saying who the steward is to that main account and completing this information. So we'll update what the main account is and we just wanna make sure that this is the very main account. So the bare minimum, if you're, one, if you're using FireNet this season, is to complete this line so we can track it. So then, you know, if something happens where I'm gonna talk about transferring to the next team, you know, I know who is the steward of the main account, our support folks know, so we can just jump in here and say, Oh, it was so and so. You need to work with them to transfer the password and 2SV. They have the they have the account information. So this gives us their information. <clears throat> Down here are role based accounts. So basically, everything, um, all accounts are the same. So you don't have to worry about jumping into a role based account and it's going to work differently. They're all going to work the same. We just call them something different because the way that we're using them is different. So these role-based accounts are for you to use and the, the FireNet leadership, the business community that's part of that has designated these as some of the key roles that will benefit from having a role-based account. 
What that means is it transfers to the next person. So if your DMOB is working and emailing back and forth, and they've created, have this role-based account created, which basically means if they put in their information that shows that they're approved to use FireNet, then they can just transition that account to the next demo person coming in. So all the information in the email that's been going back and forth just goes on to the next person, the next steward that comes in, the next person in that role. If you don't want the account, if your team has a operations section chief that doesn't want to use it this way, you just don't put their information in here and that won't be created. So the goal behind role-based accounts are is for that main inbox, especially if you would normally, and I know all teams work differently, if you would normally create a Gmail inbox, you definitely want to ask for a FireNet account here. And if for if you don't, if the role that would normally create a Gmail account is not listed, then you can list it down here and we could still create a role-based account for you. So the goal being based on how your team works, we don't want to create Gmail accounts, we would instead create FireNet accounts. So when these role-based accounts are created, the naming is just like that really long name that we reviewed on the website, but we add an underscore safety oper officer operations, we add an underscore whatever the role is. An alias is also created for this. So we get rid of the, um, the unit identifier and we shorten it, but you still have the, the, name of your, um, the name of your area is still in that email address. And it would come through as such in the name of the account as well. With these inboxes, and this also goes for the main incident account, there's one steward. So in FireNet, the way it's set up with two-step verification, we don't share accounts. So one person logs in and you then delegate that inbox and that information will, I'll show you where it is on the website before we close, on how to delegate an inbox. that account is then delegated out. So if I am the document manager here, and I've got two people I'm working with, I'm not just gonna give them the login and password to that underscore op, uh, documentation account. I'm just gonna delegate my inbox to them. So I attended this session, I knew in advance that those folks needed named accounts to access the inbox. So we've already gone through the process, they have a FireNet account, and I can go ahead and just give them access to my inbox through their named account. So if my named account is Tara underscore Taylor, FireNet admin underscore admin can just give me access. I don't know what the password is to that account. I don't know the 2SV or anything. I just have to log into my own account and I can go to that delegated inbox. And that's how we operate. All right, let's scroll over a little bit. And it shows the different fields that we want here. So next up is we can start to talk about transitioning a little bit. And I know I'm going to I'm going uh, at a pretty good speed. I just want to make sure I cover everything at the highest level. And then we'll definitely talk about some additional details. So all of these users are added to the team drive. And we'll talk more about team drive. But before we leave the sheet, I just want to visit this cell. Um, DMOB account status. So if you are, if you're in one of these roles, you've been added to the team drive, that means you can access this roster. The roster stays on the on the on the very front page of, of the incident team drive. So if you've had an account created, you can access this roster. That means once you're done with your account and you're leaving, we just want to start to put it into your regular process, but you just have to hand this account off. So if I'm ha handing stuff off to the other finance guy, gal coming in, I just say, hey, here's the account information for this main account. Here's the email address. 
let's change the 2SV and then to your phone and then go ahead and, and then you'll update the password. So this last cell is just for you to track what happened. And this may look different depending on this sheet is, is evolving right now. But so, okay, reassign. That's the perfect case scenario. If the fire's still going, you reassigned it. If the person coming in doesn't want the account or is not approved in FireNet, then we're figuring out whether we would just kind of put that to the ITSS so then they can hand that off to the next group coming in or what happens kind of in that state of limbo. So just look, see what your options are gonna be here when you're on the incident. And then please suspend. So if the account is, if the fire is over, just let us know that you want us to suspend, you're done with it, you want us to suspend the account. And if that happens, well, it will happen. Uh, when that happens, there's also, um, let me just make sure I didn't skip over anything. There's some information on the, the account setup page to help you if you want to keep that account open. So usually what we've seen is these role-based accounts might go ahead and, and close down because they're done doing business. But that main account that the public's been using, we want, um, they may want to put up some type of out of office message saying, letting people know if they've been contacting that email address, who they should contact now. So give them some guidance. So we've got some cut and paste ideas for you on the on the web page. So I I briefly went over um, transitioning accounts, but basically if if we use the main account, kind of going back to the the highest level usage that we'd like to see, instead of hotfire at gmail.com, it's hotfire at firenet.gov. So my next lead PIO is coming in. So I just say, hey, here's the login and let's reset the and the password and let's reset the 2SV to your phone so you can see the, so you get that password sent to you. And then they go in and change the password and they just use the account. So the only additional step is 2SV. We do have something, there's a few things that I'm, additional step meaning compared to Gmail. We do have something called Google Authenticator. There's a few things that I have your information from your registration for this webinar. There's a few things that I'm gonna follow up with you on that are unanswered questions at this point. One of which is Google Authenticator. So Google Authenticator lets you get the code on your phone without cell phone service. So I actually have Google Authenticator on two of my accounts, my FireNet account. So I don't get a cell phone ping with a with a code. I just pull open the app, which Google Authenticator is just an app, and I get the code right off of that. So as long as you have, um, you need the internet anyways to use FireNet. So as long as you have um, the internet on an incident, you could use the Google Authenticator. So we're working on getting more information out to you on Google Authenticator. So that'll be in my follow-up email. Also, just to mention, because it's always a pressing question, the um, we also are looking to get an update for you on Google Voice. So we're trying really hard to get Google Voice turned on. I know that the, um, you know, specifically our PIOs really want that and are gonna create it anyway. So to have that, um, be easy to just have that, be able to create that within FireNet. So that's under security review. So that'll also be in the update that goes out. All right, so we are going to visit, um, we're gonna visit a team drive. So I mentioned that the team drive was created. We pretty much like super high level, we've covered everything. But now I'm going to go into further detail. So I'm organizing this a little bit differently than we did it on Tuesday. But I just want to make sure high level, it's very clear what the process is. Because I, I did get a lot of questions. We're going to jump into Team Drive now. Um, and I'm going to, I did get a lot of questions specifically on Team Drive. So 
I wanted to make sure that we covered the whole process before jumping in there. So you have this team drive that's created. Just to give you a little background on team drive. My drive and team drive are different. So most likely you're used to my drive. So if you have Google or you have Bison Connect, you're used to my drive. My drive works on the folder level. So um, I can share different folders with different people. Team Drive does not. So if we come into Team Drive, if I add somebody to this Team Drive, then the permissions I give them are pretty much the permissions that they're going to have throughout the Team Drive. Sometimes you can, you can promote per document, but you can't demote. So you want to start with the lowest level permission. What I saw last year was they've actually, they've renamed these. And they've also, and some, this is all bonus to, to use this, this, you know, this team drive. So don't get overwhelmed. We've kind of covered the account creation, which is the very top level. Manager used to be checked by default, uh, but so everybody that added new people. So when you, you know, you put in that PIO information, plan section chief, ITSS, those folks are getting added at the highest level in the dispatch center. So they can now manage content members and settings. So they can do everything. So they're kind of equal owners of this team drive at this point. The next level down, which is by default, so if you just go to add somebody, so if you're the PIO and you have to add 10 more PIOs, or you're the plan section chief and you want to add your entire team, which by the way, you could create a Google group with your team members and just add the group, which will automatically add those names by your net account. When you add those folks, you're giving them permission to everything in this team drive. So I recommend when you're just adding your folks, I would add my people as a contributor. So they can add files and they can edit them. Do, does everybody need to delete files necessarily? Do you want them to have that or move things? So you can choose how you want to add your users. Just be aware of the different, of the different options. So once you add somebody as a content manager, they can delete things. We do, you can track the activity over here on the right. Um, and you can restore things. The goal at the end is that the, the account would then go back to the local dispatch center. This team drive would go back to the local dispatch center. I haven't talked about the electronic doc box yet, which would come into the conversation now. So NWCG had a committee that was put together uh, regarding an electronic version of the doc box for final documentation. So there is a template out there. So we're just working on um, getting approval as far as using it um, and give you guidance, which is one of the, the third things that I will send and that will be in the update that I send out before the season on this um, doc box template. So basically, it's got similar to the doc box that you're used to, but this is an electronic version. So the goal, I believe, is that this, would, this is for final documents. So you would still have your regular um, documents and collaboration going in your, in your team drive. But hopefully, you'll see a doc box template um, in your incident team drive. So that would just that would be there once you get added. There's certain things that we're adding, so they're there by default. So we're currently working through that. Any more guidance? Once we find out information, I will make sure I share that with you. And I have your information now from this webinar. So that's a little update on the um, on the electronic doc box. I'm going to show you one other thing and then I'm going to, I can start to answer questions. 
I just want to show you how to delegate an inbox because I've talked a lot about it today. There is a video, so if you go to the bottom of the, um, if you go to the bottom of this FireNet account setup page that we're reviewing, I've created videos for the commonly asked questions. Some of this was um, at the beginning of the season. Last year, questions I kept getting. How do I find my inbox? How do I find my team drive? Um, I keep getting signed off. So, you know, a few basic things. Use Chrome. Second, it's going to be a lot less confusing if you sign off of your the other accounts that you're in and just sign into your FireNet account. And I can show you how to do that. So up here in the upper right-hand corner, you can see which account I'm in, and I would just say sign off. So what you'll see, especially if, and if, you, if anybody tried to fill out the form for the ROB that needs to be updated yearly, you probably saw this, but you get bounced back to your, Bison Connect can kind of take over. They could be a little bullyish. And even though you're in fire networking and you go to, go to a team drive, then it says you don't have permission. It's because it's bouncing you back most likely to, if you have a Bison Connect account, it's bouncing you back to that account. So if you sign out of that account and just sign into your FireNet account, that won't happen. Finding the team drive. So what I wanted to show you down here was um, how to delegate an inbox. So this one's actually a Google video. It's a nice little animation showing you how to delegate an inbox. So I just wanted to show you that real quick because if you're in any of these roles um, that I've talked about, if you're using one of these role-based accounts, you most likely will have somebody that you may want to delegate it to. That means somebody else that you want to use it at the same time as you. So the way that that works, is I go to my inbox, and if you don't know how to find your inbox, please join me on a FireNet 101 webinar. I have to update a new one, so this is one that you can sign up for. We just had one this week. But if you have any very basic questions like that, please join me on a FireNet 101 webinar. Look for that link to be updated. So I'm, you have to be in mail. So I went to my mail app. They do call it it is called Gmail, the actual app, but that's confusing, so we try to use it mail, but it is called Gmail when you go to it. And then I'm going to go to this little gear, the settings icon, and I'm going to go to settings. The third, fourth option is account. And I'm going to say add another account. So I'm going to say, John, add another account, John underscore Doe at FireNet.gov. You can only delegate an inbox to another FireNet account. I'm going to say next. Then John Doe goes and he accepts that request. He, it's the granted, he says, yes, I would like access. There's a little lag time where I get questions like, I did it, but nothing happened. There's a little lag time, maybe 15, 30 minutes, um, where you're not going to see the account that's been delegated to that person. Haven't figured out why, but it is there. Small lag time. If you just refresh your account after 15, 30 minutes, it will show up. And I'll show you where it's going to, let me just jump over to a different account so we can see it. So you'll see. See, like right now, see how you don't you don't see any delegated accounts on my list, right? So I was like, shoot, that's because I'm not in Gmail on this screen. So I'm going to go to Gmail. And then I toggle in the upper right here, and you'll see, for example, I have FireNet underscore admin at FireNet.gov. So if you're working in that DMOB account or that main incident account on the incident, if this is what it's going to look like, and you just go jump into that account, and then you just do business from that inbox. So that's the way of that's the way of sharing account. So if we just jump back to this spreadsheet. So this goes for, this is why we want to track, and this is why I want you to make a copy of this and start to work 
in this spreadsheet, one person hopefully for each team getting organized in it, because you want to make sure that those two demo people that you need to delegate the account out to have FireNet accounts so that you can do that. One question we always get, and it's a little bit of a gray area, is well, why do these people need FireNet accounts if they're just going to use a role-based account? So it depends. If they're the lead person and they're always going to be the lead person, then technically they don't have to. But what we found is that two things. These people are the people that might also want to collaborate as a team. So maybe the team, the incident management team, creates a team drive to do work in. And there's a little confusion with incident with the team drive because team does not mean your incident management team. But you may want, these, these are the kind of the people that have been identified. It makes sense for them to have an account outside of an incident because they may want to do work within FireNet. And then I lost my train of thought. Um, oh, the second reason is it's really quick for us to create an account. If we know you have a FireNet account, we know you're approved to work in FireNet. So we can, this turnaround can be really quick. I always use the example of there's a plan section chief that was on board with FireNet super early. You know, he got his spreadsheet updated, he used it on a few incidents, and towards the end of the season, I mean, his process, he had his, his team wanted to use these role-based accounts. Um, from him starting the request and that coming in to all of this happening, uh, the main account being created and sent to the PIO, the team drive being created, everybody being added to the team drive, role-based accounts, everything happened in like 20 minutes. So. It doesn't have to be if you're kind of if you're organized going in and have this information already filled out, it could be a super fast process. Um, and having a FireNet account in advance, um, at least knowing if the, or if the person has approval, is key. So what that means for you is, if you have an AD on your team, we want to get them in the FireNet system now. If you have a even federal person, we want to get them in the FireNet system now if they fall within some of these key roles that we've identified so far. So just a reminder where you go to help get them in the system. And I would recommend making a copy of this document, which you can find on the website right under step one. You're going to go in, you're going to make a copy, and you're going to start to um, you start, start to track your people. So. You know, if you've got a bunch of people, if you've got a few people in demo that you're going to want, you can, you're going to probably come track wherever because it's your spreadsheet. I don't need that information cut and pasted into here. I just need the lead steward cut and pasted into here. But I want you to track that demo person so you know if they have a FireNet account so you can start to get people in these roles up to speed. So just a reminder on the website, so we went to the FireNet.gov um, to start and we went to the FireNet portal, requesting a FireNet account. So right now we're just creating accounts for IMTs and uh, dispatch center usage. We have more accounts coming May 1st, but right now based on the accounts that we have, we're looking to get our IMTs and dispatch centers up to speed. So once you're here, if you're federal, you could say yes, I have a PIV card. If you're not, you say no. I'll click no. The federal person just has to fill out the FireNet access form and let us know what team they're on, and then that's done. The affiliate, so state, local, ADs, have a step two. So they have to complete the online security training. The, there's two options. There's the Forest Service online security training and the DOI security training. Either cert is accepted. The difference in the two certs are the Forest Service one, you have to create an account to get into it. But you can, if you're familiar with the content, you can skip the content and just take the exam. So that could be a pretty quick one to get. The DOI one can only be done in one sitting. You don't have to create an account. 
but you cannot skip the content. So you have to go through every every module, and there's probably six or something modules. So those are the two. Those are the differences in that. Next step, you need to send that per that that affiliate, that AD local state person needs to send their cert to somebody federal on the team. So somebody on your team that's getting this organized, um, a federal person can act as your sponsor and send that cert to the FireNet underscore admin email address. And there's directions on the, um, the third option on that drop down is sponsoring an affiliate. So if you're that federal person and you get, you've got people to sponsor, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna cut and paste this and say the reason Jane Doe is requiring an account is she's on IMT1 in the Southwest and I anticipate needing um, the account until she's no longer part of the team. And you attach that cert. What we see a lot of is our affiliate stopping at the request. So they wanna know like what happened to my request? Um, if you just fill out the FireNet access form and we don't have any sponsorship, it gets a note that we're waiting for your cert. Um, so it's just key that people, um, people, people read through all of these steps to complete them and getting that account. So if you're, if we go back to this, you know, if we're tracking on here, so we've got John Doe. So say he, he doesn't have a FireNet account yet. Um, I put in his personal email address while I'm trying to figure things out. Phone number. We want this to be the steward. What the, whatever they're going to use, if they're going to use a phone number for 2SV, they put that in there. So you can use this to track. So if they don't have a FireNet account yet, then it's not there. And you know you need to, you want to basically fill in these blanks. So if you have, if these folks have FireNet accounts, then you'll know you'll be good to cut and paste. If you choose to use these role-based accounts, um, you'll be able to just cut and paste that information. So there is that information. You can add a, I talked a little bit about the contributor account, so your Bison Connect folks, so say, I'm the PIO plan section chief ITSS on an incident, and we've got that team drive that I showed you. Let me just go to it to give you guys a visual. So I'm in the team drive, and you know, I've got um, somebody that just came in. Oh, they happen to have a BLM account. You can add them to you can add them to your team drive. You just add the member. And you just add them as a, um, you just put in their NPS BLM account and you can add them. I would change it to contributor and then you can send that invitation. Sometimes when people get invitations, you'll see there's a primary inbox here in an update. It depends how the person uh, has their inbox set up, but just be aware that if somebody's added, it could go to your, it could go to the update section. All right, so let me just go back to incident fire net setup information. Make sure we've covered everything here, and then we will jump to questions. So one person on your IMT, hopefully you guys have designated that person, or you're gonna designate it after this call, and you are going to make a copy of the fire net account incident tracker template. We talk about getting people um, getting people accounts if they don't already have them. If you do end up with with somebody uh, a request coming in, you know where somebody happens, you guys didn't do this in advance. Uh, a, an email will help to just m mention that hey, so and so put in a request and they're on an incident, so you can reach out to FireNet support. Talks about how 2SV transitions and then how you leave the account. So then you would update that demobing tab. So 
let me just note the time on here. I'm going to jump into questions. So we ran about an hour. I am, let me just, put, I'm gonna put up, a, I'm gonna jump into questions now. I prefer if you stay on the line for me to answer your question. It'll be a quicker response. Um, but I did have, let me see if I can close that. Let me just open. I'll just put up my email, my FireNet web admin email address. Yeah, I'll just do it. Thank you. It's coming. My computer is working hard right now. It's just FireNet web admin at FireNet.gov. My the video is running and um, so my it's not it's not working right now, but I hear it working. All right, let's jump into questions and I will update that in case you have to jump off. But I do prefer if you stay on with me so I can answer your question and make sure I'm answering it um, correctly. All right, let's see. One question was, are we going back to what you previously mentioned? Main account should be the PIO. So the, um, yep, the main account, most of the time, the, well, the PIO is always going to use it. So instead of that Gmail account that you would create, the PIO is always going to use the account. But you may have, um, you may have maybe the plan section chief for the ITSS is super organized and and wants to initiate the account, like log into it and get the 2SV set up and everything. Um, and then they could technically hand it off um, if they wanted to. So kind of we give you the option in the incident account FireNet request form to say who that account is sent to. Most of the time it'll go right to the PIO. If the PIO is not comfortable logging in and getting that set up, um, then it might go to somebody else to do that. Just to note, Last season, um, you had to go in and find where your 2SV is set up, but this season, it does not work that way. And let me just show you where, where your 2SV information is. This season, right when you log into the account, you're dumped on the 2SV screen. So you don't have to go look for it. So we expect that to be um, a lot easier for, for the PIOs to log into the account. But, just because you're on this call, let me show you where your 2SV information is. And I recommend everybody does this right now. So if I have my attendees, if it looks like you guys have gone sleeping, um, hopefully you'll get active now. Um, grab your 2SV codes now so you can log into your main account, your named account, if you end up without um, cell phone and I'm gonna show you where you can get your backup codes. So these backup codes work one time, but instead of getting that 2SV code sent to your phone or having to get it from a Google Authenticator, you can just go ahead and use one of your codes. So that code, I'm gonna to go to account. Two ways to get to account, right here in our little Google app feature, or from the drop down, we could go to Google account. And then we're gonna to go to security over on the left, and you'll see two-step verification under signing into Google, and I hit the arrow. It will always ask you for your password. Anytime you do recovery information or two-step verification, it's gonna keep asking you. And then here, set up, or it'll, most of you it'll say get codes. So you just click that and it's gonna give you 10 codes. They can be used one time. So if you're with me right now, go ahead and just do it and take a picture of them. So you have them on your phone, write them down, you can print them. Um, but those are your backup codes that can be used one time. So if you end up somewhere um, that you're not getting cell service, 
that you can get pinged, um, you can use that backup code. So again, we went to account up here, went to Google account, and then we went to security. Next thing I'll show you, if you need, if you need uh, password reset at an odd time, we now have, um, or at all, we now have the, uh, the feature where you can just reset it yourself, but you need to fill out this information under security. We sent out a bunch of communications, but people are not doing it. Um, so then we manually have to go in and reset your password. So just make sure you have your recovery phone and your recovery email address completed here. And that means you can reset your own password. It depends, it asks you different, depend, it asks you different questions depending. Um, but if you have those two things, it will work. All right, and this is how the question and answer is probably going to go. I'll answer and then it'll make me think of something else that I want to share with you. I think a uh, question, if the IMT is requesting an incident account, how does it transfer from IMT to IMT? So that's just based on the person in that role. Again, we want to make it part of that um, demobbing process that as you leave and the next lead comes in, that you're just saying, hey, here's the account name and let's update the 2SB to you. All right, next question. Yeah, so has anyone asked about a role-based account for liaison? What if the IMT wanted one added? Yeah, let me just, actually, I got that question on, um, I got that question on Tuesday as well. Let me just write this down so I can bring that to the um, FireNet team, leadership team on our meeting next Thursday. Um, yes, so that was a question that's been asked, and uh, chances are you could see it in this list. If, for example, you showed up and you needed that, and you were like, well, I need that, you could write it down here, and then we would we would generate it if you have any unique ones. Um, but I think that um, could end up in the main list. I've gotten a few questions on that. Thanks for asking. Is there a flow chart or something for the email inboxes with delegated accounts? So, one would be um, to watch the, the video that Google creates. So it's a little bit cheesy, but it's, um, but it's pretty good. So that's on the bottom of the, I would just make sure you watch that video. Um, and, and just know that, so it, it depends if you're having one delegated to you or you're delegating out. Um, but if you're delegating out, then you don't really have to worry about it once it's delegated out. And if it's been delegated to you, it just means you just need to log into your named account and then it'll show up in your, when you're in your Gmail, which isn't Gmail, when you're in the mail app, um, you'll see it in that drop down. Next up, question. Will FireNet admins be scanning the roster to update when role-based accounts are set to be disabled? You're asking some great questions, Brian. No, uh, when the role-based accounts are set to be dis disabled, um, we want you to, um, I guess if, so say for example, I think FireNet support would have kind of similar to, to when the accounts are created. And let me just add this to the, my list, similar to when accounts are created, let me just jump to that roster. Um, we want you to email FireNet support to let us know that it's updated, so then we know to create the accounts because once we get a bunch of incidents going, we don't have the resources to monitor the, all these sheets that are out there. But same, um, which is a great point, um, when uh, demobbing updates the account status in a step four would be um, when the fires when uh, when an account suspended when the fires over um, would be to shoot an email to FireNet underscore support um, and it's always helpful to include a link to the to the sheet that you're working in it just makes it a little easier for us because we don't have to go looking for it 
Fantastic question. Rename doc box to include year and fire depends on how the doc box gets accumulated after the fire. Um, so, so in like this model, if, if somebody uses the template, it lives, um, the template lives within the drive. So the drive is already named, named those things. Um, and I'm not sure that there's some directions in the doc box. So I'm not sure if, um, if it has specific, it might have naming directions in it. I'm not familiar with it enough. Um, but if that's something that we end up using, we will communicate that to you. Um, so I don't want to go too far into that as far as, because there may be directions, um, even within that template, I think there's some directions on how to use it. Most IMTs don't have the same PIO, plan section sheet for ITSS go on every assignment. So is there a possibility of having more than one person on the IMT being a steward? Um, so your steward might change incident to incident. So even though you did a great job and you came in here, you copied your spreadsheet here and you filled it in, you would just have to, before, before you cut and pasted it, um, you would just have to, update who's the person on that incident. So if my um, if my plan section sheet, so say I'm the ITSS updating this sheet, um, oh, my plan section sheet is different this time, I'm, I would just, um, you could copy and paste it and just update that information in your, um, or you may have a, like a list of people that you pull from, however you could organize. Um, before you Before you move that information over to the, incident team drive here into that, that main one, um, just update it. So your steward doesn't have to be the same. Great question. Steward does not have to be the same every time. You just have to let us know who it is on that incident. Which is also another reason why, you know, sometimes we get the question, do these people really need fire net account? Um, well, it depends. Is your main person gonna be um, the same all the time? Because if somebody, has to have that inbox delegated to them, so your main person say switches, um, then they need a FireNet account. Next question. How about an account for a section not tied to an individual where general emails with daily information can go? So um, two things here. So the main incident, the main one is for the, um, is for the, the PIO, for those daily communications. But what we, most, what we see is folks using the team drive for things like IAPs, and then people can access the team drive. I don't have, um, we don't have the time to do it today, but there is a feature in team drive, for example, where even if you do have daily updates, there's, there's version history, so if I had a PDF in here, I can right click on it and I can, I can update the version. So for example, if you wanna share one link out to your community or for your team for a communication, you can just keep updating that link with version history. Um, and we may do another um, follow-up web webinar with some kind of tricks and things that we've learned that help in the community and I could cover that. Um, or you could look up version history, but we've seen that with like with IAPs, for example, where it's super handy because you just have to use one link. You don't even have to necessarily send out a new one every day. You know, it's something if someone scanned your code, it just goes to that same link um, and you've updated it. So you don't have to send out a new link. So that's just one way where, um, where general emails can go. Next question. Can more than one person be issued access to one specific role-based account? Only one person logs into it, and anybody else that gets access is, I delegate it to them. So only one person is a steward because I have that 2SV that has to be set up. So I can't, so-and-so is not gonna necessarily get the ping for either the Google Authenticator or a code sent to my cell phone if they try to log into the account. So again, I use the, um, the example of here's my inbox and I go to the delegated inbox. So this FireNet admin account, 
I don't know the login information for that. I don't know the 2SV for that, but I can go and do business. So that's the way that you um, go about uh, sharing, having two people access the inbox. Next question. So it's possible to get named accounts for the commanded general staff on a team, even if they're not federal employees, they just need to take the security training. Correct. Yep. So we definitely want those, we've, we've seen those, that the commanded general staff are folks that we, um, you know, found benefit from having the FireNet account. So we definitely want that. You would just have them follow thoroughly, read the steps for the process on the, we just go to firenet.gov, we go to the FireNet portal, and we have requesting an account. So they would just follow the, um, I do not have a PIV card. And if you're a federal person um, or another federal person on the team, you just need to send in that cert to the FireNet underscore admin email address and request that account is created. And there's directions for you as a federal person under sponsoring an affiliate. Great question. Will there be a FireNet presentation at the R1 IMT meeting in April in Missoula? No, unless it's, um, you may have one if you have, so if there's kind of a subject matter expert in the different GACs, you may have somebody presenting on it. Um, but the goal was for, um, we were trying to get a representative out to each IMT meeting. And then uh, after the shutdown, we were behind schedule. Um, and I'm actually pregnant and not traveling anymore. So, um, so I can't attend all these meetings. So this was our way to um, get the information out there. This presentation will be available on video. So I am gonna up upload this one today. Um, well, the, I'm gonna upload this presentation soon, but the presentation from today. So you could um, send folks to that FireNet portal. That's where it'll be. So the FireNet portal home. It'll be here. So like right now, there's like a current FireNet 101 up there. So we'll make sure we have that up there. And I can also um, send a follow-up email. Um, the one I want to send with Google Voice, Google Authenticator, and there was one other update. I can include a link so you can share that with others. There is one more presentation next Thursday. So if you don't have folks on, on today and you want to have them jump on another webinar, um, have them join next Thursday. All right, next question. Once you send in requests and documentation, how long does it take to get an account? So um, it can be super quick. What we found is a lot of, um, at least I found as far as support goes, like a lot, of, a lot of things go on during the day and then I find people working in the evenings and, and need help with things. So. In general, um, we'll have evening coverage and weekend coverage, and then we're here during the day. So we're working with our ITSS, a specific group that will cover the evenings and the weekends for support. So that should be a quick turnaround where those folks will be on call and they can see when a request comes in. Yep, and if you if you need to jump off and you have a question, FireNet Web Admin at FireNet.gov again is my thanks, Chris is my um, if you want to reach out with any questions there. Next question: What if a team has more than one person filling one of those positions, like two ITSSs? So for the ITSS, they just use their own account, um, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter. You would just put uh, so. On your spreadsheet, for example, you would just have two ITSSs, um, which, is which is common. So you could just add a row um, so you have that information. And that's helpful because then we know in support if somebody reaches out to us um, for help on something on the incident or a team drive or an account, we can jump in here and we see that they're who the ITSSs are. So it helps us out in supporting you. Great question. Next question. What is the avenue for a type three team to get an incident account if they do not have a plan section chief or ITSS? Great question. So 
it could be so a, a few options here. So anybody anybody could put in the the request on the INT. So if you're part of a type three, um, and you've got kind of um, you know this whole process might not work, but what will work is that key that key account instead of creating that Gmail account, because what we what we want is um, you know we don't want that account to be a Gmail account and then the type one and type two come on the incident and now they say well we already have a Gmail account we're not going to create a new account so that's where we started adding type threes to the mix so I would say whoever the person is that's going to have that um, that's going to be manning that account would be would be a good person to put in the request on a type three so maybe on a type three it would be a PIO um, but so I guess for my type threes, it would be identifying who usually creates the Gmail account and who usually mans um, who needs access to the Gmail account. Uh, on a type three basis, um, you know, anybody that either creates it or needs access, those are the folks the type three teams would want to be up to speed. Fantastic question. Next question. FireNet account holder is an LSC, PIO, plan section chief, and an IADP. Can you have more than one role? Account holder is a is a US Forest Service employee. You can have more than one role. So we sometimes get account requests that come in for a FireNet account and they do they may play multiple roles depending on what team they're on or what season it is. Um, so that's okay. They they would get um, it sounds like in this case they would get a named account, um, and then if they're on an incident they and they wanted a role-based account, they would just take on the role-based account for that incident, depending what role they were in. Let me know if I did not answer your question. Will type three teams be required to use FireNet? Um, the new NMAC memo hasn't come out. It was recommended um, last season. So we're recommending it does not take long to fill out that form and a, a firenet.gov account will come your way. So it is recommended for type three teams at this point. Next question. Are the IMTs the only ones allowed slash able to make incident accounts? Can dispatch centers do that? So what we don't want is account requests coming in from two different places. So if your IMTs and your dispatch centers aren't talking. So the standard that we've set forth for this season is that the IMT is going to put in the request. If you have a case where, um, you know, the, the IMT is not putting the request and a dispatch center or GAC wants to step in and get that process rolling, um, that's something that we could also, that could also potentially happen. Next question. Can we take this webinar again? I lost sound in the first half. Yes, you can take it again, and there's gonna be a video. So if you wanna email me um, for the video, I am gonna post it, but if you want me also to send you a link once it's posted, you can shoot me an email at firenetwebadmin at firenet.gov. And if, if you're logged into FireNet and you start to type that, um, it will come up. Where is the info on how to sponsor a non-federal team member? That information under requesting an account, do not have a PIV card. So you can, um, all the information on, on how that person, the steps that they take are there, and then actually sponsoring them is the third option, sponsoring an affiliate. So there's a little checklist for you here. Next question. How do you create a confidential folder in the team drive so some members can work in a specific folder but not everyone in the team drive? Fantastic question. So in that case, and a lot of people get excited about team drives, and they're awesome, but my drive would be the place. So if you just want, if you've got confidential information um, in one of those role-based accounts that you're, um, that you're working in, so if you're, um, if you're finance or maybe you're in the main PIO account or wherever you need, whatever um, role-based incident account you're in, I would just do it in my drive and then you choose who you share. So this drive belongs to that account and then you choose who you share documents with it or folders within. So you can lock down my drive more than you can lock down team drive. 
So these are the difference, and these are, all, these are always over here on the left, and you'll see those when you're in any type of FireNet account. Next question. Folder for computer support specialists and Docbox templates should be IT support specialists. Okay? I can, if I remember, I will send that feedback. Next question. Please show or discuss the distinction between incident team drive account and an independent IMT account, which the IMT uses team drive year round for our internal IT planning. So <clears throat> the incident account team drive is gonna be, and you'll see, I'll show you my team drive. Um, so if we come over here and I go to, so I'm gonna go to my apps up here on the right and I'm gonna go to drive. So, and now I'll go to team drive. So there's all kinds of team drives in here. Um, so I may be, if I'm on an IMT, so say I'm, you know, in, um, do I have any IMT? So say SWIC IMT, so say I'm part of the Southwest IMT team. I might have a team drive in here um, that I'm working in in team drive, so not to be confused. So I might have my incident management team may be doing work in here, cool. But that's not my, that's not my, in, that's not where I'm doing incident business. Um, if I've been added um, or when I've been added to the incident team drive, it would also, it would show up in the same area. So it'd be 2019 underscore XXX and I would see that and that's the incident team drive. Okay. so. Team drives are very lateral, so um, you know you may end up with a lot. Uh, but you know my drive is also can also be used. But if you're if you have folks doing business in their incident management team drive, cool. But that's not your incident team drive. Your incident team drive will have that naming, that nice old long name, so you won't miss it. <laughs> All right. Next question. Thanks for working. Yep, so I'm working on getting um, Google Voice. I'm, we're trying really hard, both, the, both of us FireNet admins um, are trying very hard, so hopefully uh, it'll make it through this, um, this uh, security review. Next question, will the webinar be available as a link we can look at later? Yes, it will. Um, if you can wait, it's gonna be updated on that FireNet portal. I'll remind you where I keep going back here. So now you guys should know and, and stay tuned because, you know, we may find that, you know, we get more questions after this webinar about Google Drive or, or delegating an account. So just keep your eye on this page. We'll try to send out um, any follow up webinars that happen so you could jump on them. Um, but, but keep an eye on this portal here. And this is where I will also post this video. If you want it like right away and don't check, want to check back. Feel free to uh, FireNet Web Admin, all one word at FireNet.gov, and just mention you want the video, and I'll it'll make me uh, I'll send that to you. Next question: Can a team set up a team drive to work on team business before the season? Have everyone networked together and ready, or does it have to be when going on incident through the incident request form? Nope. So anybody can set up a team drive. So if I was the plan section chief or ITSS, and I wanted to get, you know, some of my key command and general staff folks up to speed in FireNet. I'm just going to come in to let me go to my own account. So I'm just so I'm in Team Drive here, and I'm just going to say new, and I'm going to create a drive. So there we are, Southwest IMT4. So there's my drive. And now this helps you figure out who has accounts. Hopefully everybody has a FireNet account um, and I'm just gonna add them. So it's always first name underscore last name. So if I'm gonna add my people, if you start to type, it'll pick up. It will also pick up somebody's um, Bison Connect account. So it, it basically, 
in FireNet, it's picking up the person's secondary account. So if somebody has a, it, their secondary account is their business account. So usually say their forest service or their NPS account. I can add these, I can add these people with that account and then I would I decide the permission that I want to give them. So if I wanted to work as a team in advance, this is a great place to do it. Um, when you're adding, if you do have, um, if they're a key person, you're probably going to want them to, as I talked about, to be set up in FireNet. If they just need to come in here and edit some documents, um, they don't need to do much, you could always just add their Bison Connect account and you want to make sure you add a contributor folder which lets them do business. In the step on the contributor folder, um, under requesting an account, you can see types of account, and we visit the contributor account um, page, and this gives you steps on, it's super easy, we do it for every incident, so there's a contributor account folder, because with, they can't create a new document, they just have to go in and grab a blank document, so you just have to provide them for that. But great, great question. And it's a great way for your team to start to get organized and up to speed. Next question, how are buying teams being included in FireNet? So those were one of the teams that we had added to our main, um, to our main spreadsheet as far as wanting. So you can be, you would have a lead person, so you could be set up. Um, so basically what, what that means is when you're added to Team Drive, you're sharing that collaboration space um, and you have a, a, a main incident account that would transfer to um, the, if another buying team comes in. So that would be a revolving um, role-based account that's created. So two things, if you want to put any information in the Team Drive, be organized, um, and then that could transition to other buying teams. So you just want to make sure if you have a few people on your buying team that need access to that main inbox, that those people are, um, are requesting FireNet accounts because they need a FireNet account to access that main account. Next question. They left, but I'll answer it anyways. Can I fill out the spreadsheet now and create an incident but change the name as soon as we're dispatched? So we, we don't want you to just update your spreadsheet. We want you to cut and paste um, because if anything changes on this spreadsheet um, or we do any updates, we want the, the final version of what we come up with will be in your incident team drive when you get there. So just cut and paste your information into ours. Next question. Does everyone on the IMT account need a FireNet account? So not everybody on an IMT needs a FireNet account. The command and general staff, I think is what it's called, um, have been noted. So these are some of the key players that you'll most likely want to have a FireNet account. Next question. What if several PIOs need access to Drive but not necessarily email and don't have FireNet account? Um, you'll want them to have either a FireNet account or a Bison Connect account to get into Team Drive. So you'll want to include them on your um, your tracking spreadsheet to get them up to date, up, updated. I know some of our larger teams can have a lot of PIOs. Um, so if you just kind of keep tabs on who has who has FireNet accounts, um, just so your folks are up to speed um, before the season. Next question. How do we set up specific IMT accounts not related to incidents? So we don't. So that's a fantastic question. So the when you create an account, it costs money, and you get all the different apps. Individuals have all the different apps anyway. So we aren't creating accounts for the team, but if you want to do business from, so if you want either a distribution list or a collaborative inbox, we have something called Google Group. And you can go ahead and if you can create um, either, there's four different types of groups that you can create. Um, so you, one, create a team drive for your team so that you can get organized and do business there, not an inbox. And two would be Google Groups is a feature that you can find in the little nine boxes here. So here's Groups. 
and you can create a new group. So you could create a group that's the name of your team, and then you choose what type of group it is. So is it an email list, web forum, Q&A form, a collaborative inbox? The collaborative inbox, everybody has to have um, access to um, have FireNet accounts to access and do business from there. Um, but you know, you could also do some of these other options which don't have um, that constraint. Next question. How will affiliates know when they need to do their annual security training? Will it expire if they don't provide their certificate? Great question, John. Um, so an email has gone out from the FireNet admin letting, um, there's a time period, I think it's before February 1. Uh, so any account, any affiliate that created account before February 1 of this year have gotten an email um, that says, hey, we need your new security cert. Please log into your FireNet account and attach your new security cert here. So all of, all of those are being tracked in the form. So any of the, the newer requests that are just coming in would be covered, would be fine under, under this, um, this year. But I think it's, and the message says, I think it's a before February 2nd or something. Um, anything before that, they've gotten an email that tells them. So if anybody on your team um, hasn't or hasn't, um, I think that one was sent to both secondary and FireNet accounts. Um, just make sure that um, they've, have them look for that email because it uh, should be in their inbox. Uh, great question. So um, two things, if you saw that email that went out recently, the, the form that has to be filled out, the ROB form, um, that's just basically, you know, if you're a DOI or forest service, you have to agree to some, you know, you have to take your training and agree to things every year. FireNet's just, you know, the, the platform, you have to agree to that every year. So all that ROB is doing is, is cross-checking, making sure all your information's up to date. Um, and then you just click the boxes to agree to the terms. Um, so that pretty much easiest if you sign out of everything else and just log into your FireNet account. If you don't want conflicting accounts fighting over who gets to open the form and who doesn't. Um, and you just put in your information and click the boxes. So that's pretty easy. Um, and then you don't have to do it. Federal folks don't have to do any, send in anything security related, um, but our affiliates have to do one additional step again um, and just complete follow up with that email that was sent to you and um, attach your updated form um, security cert. Great question. Next question. Will multiple ORDMs on an incident, uh, incident will they share one delegated email account name? So Robin, the um, an ORDM account, if we go to visit the spreadsheet here. So say that ORDM account is created, underscore ORDM or whatever it would say. We gotta update that one. Um, so say you are the main steward, that's gonna be sent to you, okay? You log into it, You're the, you set up your 2SV, for yourself, so you're the only one that's ever going to log into that underscore ORDM account. But you're going to delegate that inbox to two other people that you need to delegate it to, and you make sure they have FireNet accounts because you wanted to use this feature this way. And then they just log into their FireNet account. So I'll go to my FireNet account. So I go to my FireNet account, and I'm not in mail. So I'm in that team test team drive I created, so I have to go to the mail. So I'm Jane Doe that you delegated the ORDM account to. And in my drop down up here, I'm gonna see 2019 underscore XX blah blah underscore ORDM at firenet.gov. They're gonna click that delegated inbox and they can just do business from this inbox here. All right. Hey, we cut down on time here. We got this covered in one hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> Next question, a few more coming in. Uh, the role-based account people share one inbox, question mark. 
we have a hard time just keeping track of PIO email. It would be horrible. No, that's incorrect. So um, the PIO email is one inbox. So let's go to our let's go to our thing. So this main account right here, admin. Um, so this is where the main account information is, and that has one steward. So your lead PIO, and then your lead PIO delegates that out to any other PIOs that need access. All these other are separate accounts. So these are separate accounts that look like 2018. They look the same as that main account that the PIO is using, but they have underscore their role. So they all have their own inboxes if they choose to complete the information. Next email. I'm a DMOB on a type two and plan section chief on a type three. Which way should I go? Um, so it doesn't matter what your what your role is. Um, unless you so say if you started out on a um, if your type two had a you would just man whatever team you were you would man whatever account you were on at the time. So um, for your type two team. For example, so we've got, um, so if this were the roster, your type two person is organized, they come in and create this. So I would just come in, this is for your type two team. So this would be your, um, for example, this would be the start to your type two team's roster that they're gonna cut, cut and paste in. But for your type three team, if they're looking to get up to speed, they're gonna copy and paste this. So when they come in, so then you'd be up here in that case, and you would not be down here. So it just depends on whatever team, whatever role you're in at that time. So um, the tabs down here, which I did not, um, the tabs down here show, show when the next team comes in that information it was probably the only thing i feel like i forgot um to mention when with but we still got a bunch of people on um the the next tab so say if if mike cool mike's here and then like say we down well say he's he's here on his he's the plan section chief on this type three they come in um they update his information then then say we're transferring from the first team to the second but uh, now he's a now he's down here. Their roster, the person would just be in a different spot. So the team that leaves updates the drop down, and then the new team is going to update the new information for who's who's acting as the steward now for those accounts. And then once it's done, no more tabs, and you just mark that um, you want to suspend the account. Any more questions? Next question. What if it's not a team that rotates out of a fire, but a single resource filling the named role? So I think where we see that, so most often would, we, that single resource just has to have um, FireNet approval. So I guess where, where I've seen something like that is where, um, where with the mostly with the main account, um, so where maybe the main account goes back to the forest or a PAO, um, so that person could just be noted. Um, so even if it's not a team, um, I would just add it, add them to note who it's been transferred to. Then we know like where the account ended. So if we do have to close an account, you know we know who to follow up with. Um, but just keep tabs of that in this trail. If it's not a team and it's a single resource, um, just note who that single resource is. And if you foresee that happening and you know who kind of the single resources are that you work with, um, we do get requests for, I think, PAO, PIO, single resources. Those accounts are generated. Um, so those folks do have FireNet accounts if they've gone through the process. Um, so the account could be handed over to them. It just has to be handed over to somebody that has approval to work in FireNet. So they've gone through the process of requesting an account.
what else do we have for questions? Any new ones, any follow up? Okay. I think we're good to close up. Um, if you have any follow-up questions, you can email me at firenetwebadmin at firenet.gov. So go ahead and, and shoot me an email if you have any follow-up. And I'm also gonna post this video um, so that I, uh, you can come back and watch it or have folks, um, have folks attend if we go to the FireNet home portal. Here, two things will be here. Um, you can sign up, have your have your team if they haven't attended one of the two, and there's some of these involved roles that I keep talking about. Have them jump on a webinar, or um, which is next Thursday, or I'm going to update. Um, this is where I will put the I will put this video. So FireNet.gov, jump over to the FireNet portal, and you will find. Um, It'll probably be right under this register now button for now. And then once the next one runs, it'll be um, right here at, on top. So, so you can watch that video. And I'll, I'll probably end up putting it in two places. I'll probably also put it under the incident fire net setup information. Have it on that page for folks to watch too. So you'll be able to find it in a few places. All right, I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Um, and you will be getting an email um, from me with an update on Google Voice, on the Docbox template, and on Google Authenticator. Um, and any other between now and two months from now when we, um, when the season gets going, any other kind of commonly asked questions. Um, so once you attended this, you'll be on my list to so go ahead and send that follow-up to. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining me.